fighting continues between Armenia and Azerbaijan over the disputed Nagorno-Karabakh region after the latest ceasefire was violated just minutes after it came into effect on the weekend. Now, the tiny region in the South Caucasus has been the site of hundreds of military and civilian deaths property destruction and inflamed tensions since violence broke out in late September, intensifying a decades-long conflict. Nagorno-Karabakh is internationally recognized as part of Azerbaijan, but is governed by ethnic Armenians as a de facto independent state. So for more insight on the ground, we now welcome journalist and security analyst Neil Hauer from Yerevan in Armenia. Neil, thank you so much for joining us right now. It's the second ceasefire to be obliterated, for want of a better word, shortly after being set up. What is the latest? You can tell us on the ground what is happening there at the moment. Well, I mean, it's hard to say exactly what happened as there's no independent monitoring uh, occurring along the ceasefire line there. But all indications point to the Azerbaijani armed forces breaking the ceasefire both times. Um, purely because it's in their interest to do so. I mean, Armenia is, uh, is, is not seeking any gains from this war, but uh, Azerbaijan is seeking to recapture as much territory as possible. And as President, as Azerbaijani President Ilham Aliyev says, they're intending to recapture the entire area. So it almost certainly was Azerbaijani armed forces that broke the ceasefire. And we also know that both sides have been pointing rather fingers at one another. What options right now does Russia have in trying to quell the tensions there? I mean, it's hard to say what options Russia has. I mean, I think Russia really, at this point, it's going to take some sort of um, major pushback by Russia against Azerbaijan, because in the essence, what we have here is we have Armenia and Azerbaijan have always existed in a state of relative military parity, but now Turkey has come in fully on support of Azerbaijan. Um, they've aided them militarily and especially diplomatically. They're fully backing them. And you know, there's, there's the view that Russia is an Armenian ally, which is true, but Russia has stayed out of this conflict. They have not done anything. So Russia needs to come down hard uh, diplomatically and perhaps militarily on the side of uh, Armenia in order to, to dissuade the Azerbaijani forces from continuing their offensive. And as you mentioned, Turkey has openly backed Azerbaijan and blamed Armenia for this renewed fighting. So how is Recep Tayyip Erdogan likely to respond down the line? What are his options at the moment? I mean, Erdogan is essentially casting around for different conflicts that he can uh, that he can take advantage of, different uh, disputes that he can start uh, around in the area around Turkey. Um, for a number of different reasons, but in part to distract from Turkey's uh, severely damaged economy over the recent the recent years. And I mean, Erdogan's gamble here seems to have been that he could come in and tip the balance of power in the favor of the Azerbaijanis and that Russia will not do anything or at least uh, will, will not do anything super forceful and that the U.S. and Europe will be distracted, which has been true so far. I mean, Europe is paying attention to some degree. They haven't really done anything yet to, to halt the fighting, just issuing statements of concern. And the U.S. is hardly paying attention at all. And neither are you, most U.S. media with the election only two weeks away. So Erdogan is trying to end the, the, his ally, uh, Azerbaijani President Ilham Aliyev, are trying to take advantage of this. And while we wait to see what leaders are going to be doing, the footage we are looking at right now, Neil, is heartbreaking. Give us a sense of the humanitarian costs. What is going to be needed to help civilians in the region when this fighting is finally over? Well, that's a big question in terms of what is this region going to look like when the fighting is over? What are Azerbaijan and Turkey going to be allowed to accomplish? Because as it stands right now, uh, the, the population of Karabakh is about 150,000 people, and 90,000 of them have already been displaced, either internally within Karabakh or outside being forced to flee to Armenia. And the, the few villages, inhabited villages and towns that Azerbaijani forces have captured, um, they've killed civilians that were found there, they've summarily executed prisoners, and the, the ethnic Armenian population has been forced out. So if there's nothing done by the world over the next few weeks or the, the next few months, and Azerbaijan manages to defeat the Armenian and Karabakh forces and capture the whole region, then we'll be looking at 150,000 people that will be permanently displaced and who knows how many of them you know, killed or executed by advancing Azerbaijani forces.